Good afternoon. Please turn in your worship booklets to the call to worship, and we will begin to worship with this responsive call. Rejoice, all saints in the Lord. Look toward God and be radiant. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Together praise God's name. I sought the Lord who answered me. Please remain seated during the entrance of the light. and the 
I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. Greetings in the name and power of Jesus Christ, the one who is the great vine. Welcome to this 48th session of the East Ohio Annual Conference. It is my great joy to call this conference to order. Please stand. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Amen. Let us pray together. We come before you, holy God, with singing and shouts of joy. You are our creator, the rock of our salvation. We praise you. We adore you. May your love reign in our hearts this day. Amen. Please be seated. O oh God of all the saints, we give thanks for the spouse of our former Episcopal leader, Bishop James S. Thomas, who shared her ministry in this annual conference, Ruth N. Thomas. O oh God of all the saints, we give thanks for those ordained, consecrated, and licensed in this annual conference. Faye A. Botten. Merle R. Burkhead. Orlando Chafee. Richard G. Cheney. Clyde Allen Cox, Sadie Davis Reynolds, Alice M. Elmquist, Donald K. Gorrell, James S. Hahn, James A. Herbst, Gerald R. Kleinfelter, Claude L. Rowe, Robert S. Wagner, Thomas E. Wallace, William D. Wright. O oh God, of all the saints, we give thanks for spouses who share their ministries in this annual conference. Ruth E. Adams, Carrie Nettie Baker, Betty J. Bars, Raymond A. Bates Jr. Barbara J. Bigsley Donald L. Bender Grace E. Boat Roy Boone Jr. Barbara Ann Crooks Alice L. Dunn, Francis E. Dreyer, Iona Fitch, Florence C. Griesinger, Mildred Hostetter, Betty Jane Kick, Mary K. Clink, Margaret D. McCowan, Diane K. Metzger, Marion L. Ryder, Maxine W. Stingling, Linda Van Meter, E. Sue Wagner, Veloise F. Willis. Amen, God. O 
O God of all saints, we remember lay people who have died, who had previously been chosen to be members of this year's annual conference gathering. And we give thanks to their devotion to God and to the church. William Drown. Eleanor Gerritsen. B.J. Henry. Anita Jackson. Sharon Lockhart. O God of all the saints, we give thanks for the lady who have served faithfully as members of past annual conference sessions. We name them now in our hearts before you. O oh God of all the saints, we give thanks for children, siblings, and loved ones whom we name in our hearts now before you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we have stood on the shoulders of these your saints. They are the ones who first lifted us to the baptismal font, and we became one with you. They are the ones who first invited us to the table, and we feasted with you. They are the ones who poured out your forgiveness when we deserved your wrath, and we experienced your love. They are the ones who granted us your grace so that we might, in turn, spare the pain of others. Let us be faithful to your call and to the memory of these, your saints. Amen.
as our bishop might say, look at God. Just look at God. You don't need a polity lesson today, but I want us to have a formal introduction of this gift of God that God has delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit to be our Episcopal leader in East Ohio Conference. This is the polity lesson I said I wasn't going to give. One does not choose to be a bishop. One doesn't run for bishop. One doesn't seek to be a bishop. But in the polity of this United Methodist Church, the church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, recognizes the gifts, the grace, the possibility, the leadership, the heart, the mind, the discernment of individuals, and the church calls forth a bishop. If you know this bishop, and you will know this bishop, because our bishop will be known, you will see right away, and I believe for all of her service, the wisdom of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in providing this leader to our church, our conference, at this time. There's a lot of, of awards, there's a lot of bio, there's a lot of fancy things that could be said, and you can read about those. But I want you to know, and I think many of you know already, I'm so grateful for God sending this Malone family, Mr. Derek Malone, Ms. Alexis Malone, who will be a sophomore at University of Missouri in the fall, Ms. Ashley Malone, who will be a sophomore at Glen Oak High School in the fall, and our bishop, Tracy Smith Malone. Look at God. Will you welcome our bishop, and then the scripture will be read, and you'll hear her wonderful preaching. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 58. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with mortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up and victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 
Will you please stand in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel? John 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer, that the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen. I invite you to reflect with me on the theme for this message, laborers in the vineyard. Laborers in the vineyard. We gather this afternoon as a community of faith to remember and to give thanks to God for our brothers and our sisters who have lived and died a life of faith in Jesus Christ, whose lives have borne witness and testimony to the grace, to the love, and to the power of God. We remember and we celebrate. We celebrate their lives and ministries because we know that the journey of life in faith is one that is filled with joy, and peace and blessings too many to number but we also know that there are hills and valleys trials and tribulations and hardships along the way we remember we remember because they have triumphed they have fought the good fight they have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors And praise be to God that their works do follow them. Friends, we take time to remember because we have this mysterious promise, one that we don't fully understand, but one that we know is true, that we will not all die, but we will all be changed. And when the trumpet sounds in a twinkling of an eye, the dead will be up and out from their graves beyond the reach of death, never to die again. Praise be to God. So we say, death, you don't have the last word, for death has been swallowed up in victory. So where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Thanks be to God because we have victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Our time of remembrance for the lives of our beloved is made more profound by remembering the sacrificial love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we can stand firm, letting nothing move us off the promise or away from the victory that we have in Christ. And we can always give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord because the word of God reminds us that our labor in the Lord is never in vain. Nothing we do for Christ is a waste of time or effort. Let the people of God say amen. amen. So what does this giving ourselves away fully to the work of the Lord look like? I'm glad you asked that question because I have come to offer a response. How might giving ourselves away fully to the work of the Lord, what might that require of us? In the Gospel of John chapter 15 verses 1 through 8, we enter into a conversation with Jesus that he's having with his disciples. And here we find him talking with them and teaching them about what is required of them as they seek to live this committed life, giving themselves fully to the work of the Lord. In the previous chapters in John, John teaches them and Jesus teaches what it means to abide. What does it mean to abide? What does it mean to be connected? What does it mean to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then here in our text, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper, and he removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he prunes and trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. But hear the good news. You are already trimmed because of the word that I have spoken to you. You are already trimmed because of the word that I have already spoken to you. I don't think you've heard the good news. You are already trimmed because of the word that I have spoken to you. Christ is divine and God is the gardener who keeps us who takes care of the branches to make them more fruitful. The branches are all those, the community of faith who confess and claim Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. The branches are we who made the promise in our baptism and confirmation vows and we renew this promise in this covenant every time we participate in the baptism ritual and the membership ritual. Don't you remember? When we ask the question, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? And we say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And we respond, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with, the, with Christ who has opened the church to people of all ages and nations and races, and we say, I do. Jesus reminds us that he is the true vine, and God is the gardener. God is the keeper of the branches. He is the keeper of our lives, the keeper of our souls, and oh, how it is to be kept by God. St. Augustine, in his confessions, he says this, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our soul is restless until it rests in you. Our soul is restless until it rests in you. 
Now, friends, I do not profess to be a gardener by any imagination. I am a city girl. We had a little garden in the backyard with some tomatoes and collard greens, amen? But I don't profess to be a gardener. But this I have learned, that the vine grower's task is to do whatever pruning is necessary that will prepare the vine for growth. This is what I've learned, that grapevines produce fruits on one-year-old wood. And when a bud sprouts in spring and grows into a new shoot within the larger grape plant, it is considered one-year-old wood. Watch this. Then the following spring, the buds on the one-year-old wood will grow flowers which develop into more fruit, while the buds on the older wood produce only leaves or shoots. The primary goal of pruning is to maximize the amount of the one-year-old wood on each grapevine because if the plant produces too many grape clusters, it lacks the energy and the nutrients to fully ripen them. And left to their own devices, a grapevine grows into a deep mass of mostly older wood with relatively little fruiting wood each year. So pruning is necessary for the vine to grow. Some of you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> pruning is necessary, uh-huh, to allow the vine to grow. And so it is with us the body of Christ. It is God who makes new life possible. It is God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who transform our lives and our ministries in our relationships in our communities. God is the one who prunes away what is unproductive to make room for what is possible, for new life to spring forth. It is God's desire that we, the body of Christ, be fully alive in Christ so that our lives and our ministries can be full of vitality. God so loved the world that he sent his son into the world so that the world might be saved through him that we might live meaningful and purposeful lives, that we might bear fruit and fruit that will last. Henry David Thoreau, one of my favorite practical theologians, he says this, aim above morality, be not just simply good, but be good for something. <laughs> Hear that again. Aim above morality. Be not just simply good, but be good for something. Pruning is necessary. It frees us from and frees us toward more purposeful lives that we might bear more fruit in our lives, in our ministry, in our relationships, will be more fruitful. Amen, somebody. Amen. Although pruning can be painful, amen? amen? But pruning is necessary in order to produce more fruitfulness. The Word of God says it is God who cuts off and cut away the things that hinder and impede our relationship with Christ and our relationship with our neighbor. God prunes, he cuts off, and he cuts away that which distracts us, that which deters us from going into all the world. Not just in our own communities, not just in the places where it's most comfortable, not just with people who look just like us, but he prunes us to free us to go into all the world that the world might come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. God prunes us that we might share the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
to bear witness to God's unconditional love, his extravagant grace, to be God's agents of healing and reconciliation and justice. God prunes us to free us from the bondage of sin, to free us from the bondage of hate, to free us from the bondage of fear and self-reliance and free us for joyful obedience unto the Lord. God prunes us. The word of God says, and this is the good news, you are already pruned. You are already trimmed because of the word that I have spoken to you. Therefore, abide in me and I will abide in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must abide on the vine. Likewise, you cannot produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, then you will produce more fruit. Hear the good news. That's the promise. And God is a keeper of his promises. If you abide in me and I abide in you, then you will bear much fruit. But without me, and we need to hear this today, without me, you can't do anything. We are smart. We are an intelligent people. We are a gifted people people we are a differently abled people and no matter how good we are if we are not connected to the vine we might do well but it will not last apart from me you can't do anything he wants us to bear fruit not just for the moment but the bear fruit that lasts and then here we have this mutuality of promise Jesus says, abide in me, and I abide in you. You will produce fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. But anyone that does not abide in me, he's like a branch that withers and is thrown away. But if, there's the if again. Pay attention to the if. If you remain in me, and I remain in you, ask for what? it is we need not be timid in our asking if you are abiding then we need to grow in our capacity of asking hold God to his promises he says ask for whatever it is and it will be given to you because this is for my father's glory that you will bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciples John uses the term abide over 50 times in his writings and over 11 times just in this chapter alone. It's something about abiding. There is power in abiding. Abiding is a dependence upon Christ's provision of life and strength and power. Abiding is reading and believing in God's word. My daddy would often say, Tracy, don't just get into the word, but let the word of God get into you. Let it penetrate your very being. Abiding is praying unceasingly. Having an abiding, persevering relationship with Jesus Christ. Abiding is claiming the promise in verse 16. And hear this, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. According to the message translation, abiding is living in Christ and making your home in Christ and inviting Christ to make his home in you. To choose not to abide is more than just a hindrance to fruitfulness. In choosing not to abide, you cut yourself off 
from the source of the life-given power that only Jesus can give. Over the course of my 28 years in ministry, I've witnessed churches, communities of faith that move through hardship and difficult challenges and barriers to a greater level of increased commitment to the mission of Jesus Christ by moving beyond the walls of the church, being in ministry with the poor, welcoming the stranger, risking themselves for others in the name of Christ. I've watched the pruning process and it was painful. But let me tell you what I saw. I saw God's pruning at work and I saw how people's lives were being changed and ministries transformed and I witnessed these churches bearing fruit in unique and unpredictable ways. But guess what? Over those same 28 years in ministry, I've witnessed churches pulling back that have lost sight of the mission of Christ and chose not to abide on the vine and only concerned for their own comfort and security, who refused to grow or change or to become welcoming, who chose not to care for the poor, for the needy, and for the marginalized. And some of these churches are facing the inevitable. Some of these churches are no longer even existing. And some barely existing. Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you. And if you abide in me and I in you, you will produce fruit. And without me, you can't do no thing. I give thanks to God for the saints that we are remembering today. I give thanks to God for the way in which the promise of God has been lived out in those that we have named in this service. I give thanks to God for the way in which their lives have proclaimed and bore witness to the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. And just as they have abided, and just as now they have joined the church triumphant, I pray that while we are still here and while the blood is running warm through the veins of our bodies, that we will choose to abide on the vine, that we will choose to make our home in Christ and let us watch together as we pray together that by the grace of Jesus Christ, we will bear much fruit and fruit that will last. To God be the glory for his love and his grace and his power and his provision and his promise. To God be the glory. Amen.
Christ our Lord invites to its table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Confess that we have not loved you our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and bless for joyful obedience. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Abiding God, you planted the vineyard of creation and called your chosen people to be your vine, rooted and grounded in you. In Jesus, you gave us the true vine, turning earth into grapes and the water of life into the wine of eternal life. Through your Son, you abide in us, and in the power of your Holy Spirit, you shape us as branches of the vine to make fruit that will last. Your son was crucified on the vine of our sin, that the blood of his sacrifice might be the wine through which we may never be thirsty again. In this meal of creation, of resurrection, and of everlasting life, you pour out the cup of your abundance to give us eternal joy in you. And so, we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of the unending praise. transforming God. You welcome us at the table as brothers and sisters in a new family. Shape our life together by the way we belong to one another in you. We ask that you come among us now in the power of your Holy Spirit and make the ordinariness of our branches course with the pulse of your eternal life. Sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who at the supper with his disciples, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Companionable God, you turn word into flesh and your perfect love cast out all fear. You show us a way to love you by giving us brothers and sisters to love as we love you. Abide with all whose lives are far from fruitful. Remain with those who have experienced pruning. Dwell with any who feel like branches that have been discarded. Unite your whole church, O oh God, living and departed, 
as branches of your one vine and by being rooted and grounded in you, make us fruitful in body and mind and spirit until we stand before you with your whole creation and you are all in all, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now with the confidence of being the children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus calls us here to meet him as through word and song and prayer. We affirm God's promised presence where his people live and care. Praise the God who keeps his promise. Praise the Son who calls us friends. Praise the Spirit who among us to our hopes and fears attends. Jesus calls us here, confess him word of life and Lord of all. Share flesh and frailness, saving all who fail or fall. Tell his holy human story, tell his tales that all may hear. Tell the world that Christ in glory came to earth to meet us here. Jesus calls us to each other, found in him are no divides. Race and class and sex and language, such are barriers he derides. Join the hand of friend and stranger, join the hands of a and youth. Join the faithful and the doubter in their common search for truth. Jesus calls us to his table, rooted firm in time and space, where the church in earth and heaven finds a calm and meeting place. Share the bread and wine his body, share the love of which we sing. Share the feast for saints and sinners hosted by our Lord.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us stand as we are able, as we sing together, I come with joy. As we abide in Christ, Christ promises to abide in us. And in our abiding, we will bear fruit, fruit that will last. And in this way, our God, our Father is glorified. And this proves that we are his disciples. May the love of God and may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and may the fellowship, the communion, and the anointing, and the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you, abide within you this day and forevermore. Go forth in peace and go forth in love. Amen. Amen.